Hello everybody, it's me again. I'm uh, part three of my video series here. I'm reading stories from my life as a rescue uh, worker in Providence, Rhode Island. So today, we have a fun little story called um, Heartbeat. And it's uh, one of those stories you get a call for a kid not breathing or without a heartbeat. And that uh, makes everything a little more interesting. Uh, a little more focused, not that we don't always focus, but for a 11-year-old uh, child that's, um, you know, not breathing and whatever. We really tend to uh, step it up a little. So anyways, here we go. You ready? I'm at the library, by the way, doing this. So I'm kind of keeping it low. I don't want people thinking I'm some kind of a nut talking to himself. And some lady's looking at me right now thinking I'm a nut talking to myself. And away we go. All right. The kid was alive when Engine 3 arrived, but he died within minutes. Engine 3 to fire alarm. 11-year-old male, code 99, came over the radio. Rescue one received. I put the mic down and put on the gloves. My new partner, Adam, picked up the pace, instinctively knowing this was the real thing. We arrived on scene 30 seconds later, entered the home, and saw CPR in progress. He was breathing when we got here, then he stopped and went pulseless, said the officer of Engine 3. We put him on a backboard and continued CPR, picking up our equipment and patient, and carried him out of his home, through a snow squall and into the ambulance. His mother sat in the front, peering back as we worked. The monitor showed a systole, no shock advised. Joe, one of the firefighters from Engine 3, worked like a madman trying to find a vein, while Donna, another firefighter from Engine 3, and Adam, my new partner, did CPR. What medical condition does he have, I asked his mother, trying to keep my voice steady. A neurological disorder that causes seizures. He was at the doctor's today for trouble breathing, she replied. She sounded calm. I think she was in shock. Joe found a good vein and sank the IV. Go, I said to Ray, a new guy who was in the driver's seat of the ambulance. He sped towards Hasbro Children's Hospital while we continued to work. One round of epi was useless and he remained pulseless. We tried an atropine, nothing. I attempted to tube him. The potholes made it difficult. I failed and picked up the phone. Rescue on to Hasbro. I've got an asystolic 11-year-old male. CPR in progress, IV established. ETA, two minutes. The doctor on the other end of the phone asked a few questions. I gave the answers the best I could, then hung up the phone. Another round of epi was ineffective. We brought him into the ER and transferred care to the medical team that had gathered. I gave the story and stood back, watching them work. Five minutes passed, more epi, atropine, and then sodium bicarb. I gave up hope. The room was a flurry of activity, noisy and a little chaotic. I saw the boy's parents outside the door, the mom now crying, stunned and the father is in shock. We've got a pulse. The room went still. Sure enough, a rhythm appeared on the monitor, sinus tack. A few minutes later, I saw my patient open his eyes and look around the room. It's kind of strange what happened next. I was fully prepared for him to die. Whatever it is we have inside of us, making it possible to do this job was in full operation. I didn't feel anything, not sadness, despair, or frustration. I knew we did our job and the outcome was out of our hands. I was at peace with that. Whatever it is that allows us to do this job disappeared as soon as I heard he had a pulse. When I saw him open his eyes, my own eyes filled with tears. It was strange, but I'll take it over emptiness any day. It's good to know I still had a heart and that it was still beating. So, that was a happy ending to a potentially tragic story. Thanks for tuning in. Gonna have another story for you next Monday. Bye.